Welcome back. It's Richard Allen Washington, and I'm excited this night to greet you for our Bible study in God's Word. Welcome to 2023. Great things are in store for us, and I'm just excited that you're willing to partner with me tonight. And I promise that God has a special word for you as we walk through one piece of scripture. Let's get started. Let's pray and let's go right to work. God, speak to us in this moment. We don't know what will come, but we know we desire to hear from you. So speak and we shall receive. We open ourselves to you in this moment as a community of faith in this space. Through Christ, who is Lord of everything, we say amen. Thank you so much. Where do we begin this year? Where should we begin? We should always begin with the understanding that the best is yet to come. And what I'd like to share with you tonight as God is directing is a special formula that God has given for us to follow this year. Well, it's not just a formula, I should say. It's more than that. What this really is, is it's a declaration that God has given through a servant that we know as Moses. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31 and verse eight, this rendering is from our New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV version. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Now family, it's no secret that God is using a very important and popular character in the Old Testament, Moses. But what I want you to understand is how this particular passage of scripture takes place. This is at the end of Moses' journey as a leader, an active leader. Moses is about to turn the leadership role over to Joshua. Moses has led people for 40 years. He's led them through ups and downs and he's led them through challenges. And he is being what every one of us needs to be this year, always self-reflective. Moses in self-reflection and get this, in a podcast, if you will, talks to Joshua about what Joshua will need for the new journey ahead. And so I think it's perfect that as we begin the new year, we also hear from God as we take a new year and see what we can use and how God wants to bless us. Moses says to Joshua, as he prepares to pass the baton from the old to the new, he says to Joshua, remember this. And he says this after 40 years of leadership. I want to start out by just saying with you, this is just what God has given me in this very moment. That one of the things that we can identify with Moses in is that everything we desired to happen for us last year didn't take place. Even though I said to you that God still had time to do it, I'm certain because some of you have shared with me privately that everything that you desired to do and felt led to do didn't happen in the year. I want to share with you this fateful day that some things we must be clear are not happening in chronological order. There is a difference, beloved, between chronos and kairos. We love chronos because it means that there's a day, an hour, a month, and a year that God will manifest some things. But I've discovered walking with God and, and talking with God and learning about the ways of God, which are not like us and not like our ways, that God moves in what is called Kairos time. And that is different than Chrono. Chrono is stricter. It's professed in days, months, years, hours. Cairo is a seasonal experience where God interrupts us and begins seasons. And so Moses, reflective, shares with us that Truthfully, some things that we desired in the last year may not have come forward, family, but guess what? It's still a particular season. Never underestimate the season that God has you in. Years can change, but we just don't know what seasons will do. Family Moses is preparing to change seasons. And as he prepares to change seasons, he shares with Joshua as he begins a new season. 
And any one of us can take a moment to hope, to pray, to watch for a new season this year. I'm instructed by God to share with you that after 40 years, get this, of leading the same people and getting stuck in difficult and challenging places and times that we have called the wilderness, Moses is about to be released. I wanna share this with you, and I'm not preaching, I'm just sharing this from God. Do you know that there are those of us who are listening and looking who can identify with that? We've been in the same space and dealing with the same people and jobs for 40 years too. Some of us don't have 40 years, but we've got enough years to know that we're tired of being where we are and we want difference. How do you hear and prepare for difference as Moses is preparing Joshua, who has been a servant and now is about to shift into a new season? Moses says to Joshua something that I believe it's important for us to have tonight. And by the way, I know I didn't share a subject with you, but it's something that it's important that I think a subject or a tag, if you will, is this efficient for. But since you are used to that, and since I'm kind of used to giving it, I'll give you one. Subject tonight is just simple, what we need in 2023. We need to remember this, this promise, this word that God has for us in 2023. Wherever you go, whatever you're doing, here it is. Moses bellows out after a moment of self-reflection to Joshua. He says to him, what verse eight says, God will go before you. I need you to know that this year, the first thing that we learn in this new Bible study is that God is going to go before us. I don't know about you, but Moses understood the value of that because of his experience. To know that God is going before Joshua. And in essence, God is going before the people of God. Moses knows this. And we need to remember this. Before you go any further in 2023, I wanna to announce to you that God is going before you, that God is going to go ahead of you. That's what some version says, not before you, but ahead of you. It means that God family is already where we're headed. I like that. If God is already where we're headed, it means that God has what? Already gone before you and knows the way that you're traveling now. 2023 is a new year for us, but it's not new for God. God's already been here and he's left calling cards that we will discover this year. So the first thing that you need to remember in this year is that God is going before you everywhere. And get this, and going before you in all things you shall do. I want you to remember that, that God is going before you and if God has gone before you and is allowing you and me to walk through this, it means that God has betted on us, has decided that we will overcome everything in this way. The second thing I want you to remember, family, is that not only does God go before you, but that God is going with you. I'm excited about this one. God is going with me. God just didn't go ahead and plan the way but God decided, I'm gonna walk with you. And I don't know about you, but I'm most excited that God is gonna walk with me. You know, life can be lonely, and this year we don't know what's gonna happen. There, there could be people who walk away from us, not because we're bad, but because their time may be up. And we need someone who will go with us that sticks closer to us than our own flesh and blood. God promises not to just go ahead of you, but to also go with you. Moses could understand that because Moses knew that God had not only gone before him. Remember, Moses was a, a shepherd and God picked him and sent him on his way and he became a major leader. God had gone before him. God had walked with him and that's important. God was walking with him and God says, Joshua, God says, Moses, Moses says to Joshua rather, God is gonna walk with you. I like this because Moses is saying to you and to me, there's no place we shall go that God isn't willing to go with us. There's an old song that came out in Motown called Reach Out, I'll Be There. And I love it because it is a reminder family that there is absolutely no place 
that we could ever go that God won't be with us. The song says, I'll be there with the love that will cherish you. All you got to do is reach out. And I'm saying tonight, all we have to do is reach out and hear God saying, I'll be there. I'm walking with you. God goes before. God goes with. And there, because God is going before and God going with, what's next? What's the verse tell us that happens next? God goes before. God goes with. And therefore, we should not be afraid. God is before us, God is going with us, and therefore we should not be afraid. I wanna pause for a moment and place this scripture back on the screen so you can get a clear picture of what it is. God goes before, God goes with, therefore we should not be afraid. You know what's so powerful about this? That God goes before, I'm saying it again, so you can get the formula. God goes with, so we shouldn't be afraid. There's one thing that makes us not be afraid. That is, God won't leave nor forsake. What I love about that part, before Moses mentions being afraid, Moses says that God will never leave nor forsake you. You know, Moses had been doing this for a long time, 40 years, and he know that there are people who will come and go. People are fickle, and you should have learned that in 2022. But people are fickle, and in 2023, knowing how fickle and phony people can be, you need to remember that God promises not to leave nor forsake. What's the difference? What is the difference between leaving and forsaking? Leaving means that you've reached your limit, that there's a, a limit on my strength and my ability to stay. God has no limits. That's what I want you to remember. God has no limits this year. There's no limit to what God is willing to do in your life and mine. None, if we're willing to follow. No limit. Leaving says that I've reached a limit. Forsake is something different. It says that God won't leave, no limits, but also God won't forsake. You know what that means? God will never turn away completely and abandon us. To forsake means to turn away to release. God never releases us, forsakes us. God never turns from us. No matter how trifling and, and wearied and, and, and human we are, God won't do that. And because God won't do that, family, we have no reason to be afraid or discouraged or dismayed. That's what the scripture says. Because God won't, what, leave or forsake, we don't have to be afraid and we don't have to be discouraged. Remember these things. God promises to go before you. God promises to go with you. God promises not to leave you, no matter how we mess up, no matter how we flunk. God promises not to leave. And God promises no matter how stinky and nasty and unproductive you have been or will be, I won't forsake. And because God won't do that, we don't have to be afraid of losing. That's really what you and I struggle with. How we gonna lose? God says there is no loss because I'm not leaving and I'm not forsaking. And since there's no loss, I don't fear and I'm not discouraged. The discouragement will come when it doesn't look like we want it to, when it doesn't feel like we want it to, when it doesn't sound like we want it to. But if you remember this, God is before us, God is with us, God won't forsake or leave us. We won't have a reason to fear. And guess what? We won't be discouraged no matter what we see. This is all I have tonight. I'm hopeful that you'll join me next week. It's going to be exciting again. And I pray that you are willing to trust God in this new year, unlike you did previously. If you say to me, I did, I trusted God last year. I'm saying that there's a whole new way that God wants you to trust this year. Join me this year in trusting God in a fresh way. Let's pray as we go home. Thank you, God, for the moments we've shared and may this word manifest in all of our lives. May we remember that you are before, that you're with, that you won't forsake or leave. And therefore, we will not fear and we will not be discouraged. We love you, God, and be with us. Amen. Have a great night. Now, see you on Sunday.